He is the chief product designer of Cobra Open factories around the world. He started his criminal career by designing currency forgery machines and joined Cobra after escaping from a prison. Hi, I am Fanskur Rani and you are watching my Cobra Convergence 4 review of Cobra's anti-armor specialist and my first G.I. Joe figure, this crap iron. This is the Fun School Scrap Iron. He was part of Wave 1 Fun School Joes released in India in 1988 as well as in Egypt through Nilco branding and stayed in production in India until Fun School ceased production of GI Joes in 2010. I still remember picking him up back in 1989 or 1990 out of the plethora of figures that were on offer that time because of the meaty accessories he came back with. And I am perhaps not the only one who chose his figure this way because I know at least two three guys in the Indian show community whose reason for picking up Scrap Iron as their first figure was his accessories too. Scrap Iron came in three card types. This first release card had this explosive background and had this yellow insert which listed all the flag point offers of Fun School. The offer was also advertised at the bottom left corner of the card and in later release this flag point offer was dropped and this insert is missing. Thus this uh, flag point offer of Fun School was very short lived. One striking feature that got omitted from the re later release of Fun School Scrap Iron figure was this Cobra insignia on his left shoulder. Then came this second card type in late 90s featuring digital background artwork instead of explosion. In this iteration of Scrap Iron, Fun School did away with the black figure stand that they had included in all the earlier releases. This card quality and figure plastic quality was also compromised. The third and final card type was this 2009-2010 25th anniversary type cards which were Fun School's last ditch effort to revive the G.I. Joe brand. The card quality is the best in the Fun School line and the figure and content remain unchanged from the second version. Now I know how badass Scrap Iron was in the cartoons. But what about in the comic books? Sadly, I do not know as G.I. Joe comics in India were not that popular and most of us only came to know about their existence as an adult collector. So let me cut in my good friend Shabir from Codename New to Vero 2 to shed some light. Hey Ronnie, thanks for having me. Man, it's been a long time and I've been looking forward to coming on to your great channel. I love watching your channel because it gives you a more in-depth international feel of G.I. Joe. Now for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Shabu Aryu. My channel, Codename New to Vero 2, we actually continue with covering the G.I. Joe action in the IDW comics. Often I'll cross-reference what's happened in the Marvel run to what's currently going on. Yes, Larry Hama is still writing G.I. Joe comics and it's been amazing. So if you don't have access to G.I. Joe comics, which actually is kind of difficult here in the States, please consider following along on my channel and join in on the conversation because that's how we keep G.I. Joe alive for the next generation. Now, when you think about um, Scrap Iron, Ronnie, he's, he's one of those guys that, you know, unfortunately didn't quite pan out. He came in, as you point out, in the iconic 84 lineup with Storm Shadow and so many other iconic figures. He kind of got lost in the shuffle over there. And for some reason, Larry Hama didn't really use him that much in the Marvel run. Now, let's look into IDW, and I'm gonna make this really simple. 
so far, he has yet to make an appearance in IDW or make any impact whatsoever. Now, as far as the Marvel run, he made his first appearance in issue number 43. And it's one of my favorite covers. I mean, this looks like it belongs on a Megadeth album. I mean, look at that. That is awesome. So let's look into see where he popped in in that iconic issue. Along with the amazing cover, the issue itself is also great. Scrap Iron's first appearance comes two years after his 84 figure was released. So by the time 1986 rolls, his action figure was no longer appearing in stores. Now, in this issue, he appears along with Firefly. They are in pursuit of Candy, Billy, and the Softmaster. He actually kills three characters. Well, he kills two. Billy will pop up later on. So both Candy and the Softmaster perish by his hands. We also see him, as you see in the cover of the Order of Battle Cobra edition, where it basically highlights what's featured on his file card. What's interesting is that in the Sunbow series, they have him creating the bats, where in the comic books, it's Dr. Mindbender that created the bats. So it just seems like Sunbow and Marvel they kind of went about it differently, but they had the same concept about the character as a mercenary that was only loyal to the dollar and someone that you don't want to turn your back to. Friend or foe, that's a scumbag. So anyway, it's just interesting to see what his future will be because like as I mentioned, he hasn't been used in IDW. So, it remains to be seen if I, um, Scrap Iron makes a reemergence. Anyway, back to you, Ronnie, and thanks for having me. Thanks for the great insight, Shabir. Guys, you can find the link to his channel in the description. Go check it out. And now, it's back to the review. Now, comparing the Fun School release with Hasbro US release, telling who's who is very easy. The US release came with red t-shirt whereas the fun school release came with flesh tone on this part keeping true to the card art where scrap iron can be seen wearing no t-shirt underneath. Another difference noticeable is that the fun school India made scrap iron hat made in India fun school stamped at his back. Whereas the US version that I have has made in Hong Kong stamped at its back. And in later iterations of Scrap Iron, this made in India fun school mark was omitted. And also there is no Hasbro markings on his thighs. It is plain. And also the Cobra insignia is on Scrap Iron's right arm. Whereas Fun School release either had it on the left arm or none. Scrap Iron to me is a top figure with great colors and thankfully Fun School didn't go low with the colors this time around. Uh, but I have seen a green color version of Scrap Iron in the his tank forums. His recolored body was used for making another character from the Fun School Complaint Commando line. But that's for another time now let's have a look at scrap iron's file card the file card says that his code name is scrap iron and description cobra anti-armor specialist primary military specialty is tank destroyer and secondary specialty is naval munitions uh, scrap iron is the chief product designer for the illicit cobra weapons factories around the world Although he specializes in anti-armor weaponry like Doe, he has also designed cunning versions of anti-shipping mines for use in the crowded tanker lanes of the Gulf to threaten world sources of will. 
then it goes on to say that he commenced his criminal career by designing currency forging machines, joined the Cobra organization after escaping from a long prison sentence for design, theft and patent violations. And then there is a quotation, the scrap iron is destructive yet precise and calculating. He appreciates good design. That's why he is torn between wanting to smash G.I. Joe Mobats and wanting to possess one. His true genius lies in designing deceptive weapons, everyday objectives which turn out to be lethal. Now you can compare it with the US release file card that I have gotten from yojo.com. Fun School had their own writers writing file cards for Indian G.I. Joes that were released in the wave one. Now if I compare it with the second release card, you can see the writing is identical. And if I compare it with the third release card, they have made an error. They have missed a line after anti-shipping mines here and jumped right to commence his criminal career. So they tried to shorten it up but instead they missed out a line which made this meaningless. Cunning versions of anti-shipping mines for the use in the comments to criminal credit makes no sense. So that was Fun School's quality control back in 2009-2010. That's my review of the Fun School Scrap Iron. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and feel free to follow me on Twitter or Facebook, link in the description. Tomorrow on Cobra Convergence 4, a steamer from half the battle. And this video is dedicated to my mom and dad whose anniversary is today. So happy anniversary, ma and baba. And I'll see you Joe Bros next time. Until then, Cobra! Oh, yeah.